and welcome back. My name's Jim, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about exhaust design. So let's get on with it. Now, when the Cortina left the factory back in 66, it was fitted with this. It was designed by Cosworth, apparently. Uh, it's a four branch manifold made of mild steel, uh, 421. Um, it's seen better days, but as all things, it can be improved on. Now, I'll put that down. A lot of the reference I've had for all this work has come from this book. I've had this for years. In fact, the exhaust is one thing I actually have done a bit of uh, simulation with um, because back when I was at university, we had access to um, a piece of software made by a company called uh, Ricardo who do a lot of automotive development for manufacturers, for engines, transmissions, and all sorts of bits. But they have this really good simulation software and I actually did quite a lot of work on the Cortina's engine because it was the one engine that I had so much information for, um, starting off building a standard engine. And I got it within a few horsepower and a few pounds of torque, but enough of a basis to start with. And I went through some of these calculations and I worked out the lengths I needed and the diameters. And as I'll come on to explain, everything's not going to be perfect to that. Um, but let's, let me show you some numbers. I'll explain a bit more. So this is the calculation that I'm looking at. <clears throat> and that is uh, the, for, the, for the overall length of the primary and the secondary part of the manifold. That is, let's grab this. From here, where, it en where the gas enters the manifold, to here, that length. Now you can take the the collector length off this, but that is the off. Oh, sorry, off the the number we're going to get. But yeah, this is the length we're going for. Now, sorry, put that down. I've done two working examples of this, and that is for the GT camshaft and the Kent two three four, which is like the lariest road camshaft you'd want to use. Um, now, from my testing, I did. I actually looked at this at three and a half thousand RPM and found that it was way too low for the um, for the, the peak torque. I'll put some graphs up in a second, but so I did two tests, one at three and a half and one at um, seven and a half. And you can see the difference in the length because when you go from three uh, three and a half here, you've got fifty six inches, but when you go up to seven uh, seven and a half, obviously drops by almost well, just over half, 24 inches, which is a lot more manageable because getting a, a primary length like that in, the exhaust is going to pretty much end at the back of the car by the time you've done it, but not without a system, sorry. Um, and it's the same story with the 234. You've got slightly more duration, which makes the camshaft um, slightly, sorry, makes the exhaust primary slightly longer. So what I'll do, what I'm aiming for is something, something between 628 mil and 652 mil overall. And that's hopefully what I'll get. <clears throat> so you've got that overall length from here to here. Now you'll see on that graph that I've, I'm just going to throw up now is that there are actually six exhausts on there. And the reason for that is there was nothing to say what the breakdown should be between the primary and the secondary. So I thought I'll just do it as a percentage. So we'll start off with a 50-50 split, a 60-40 split, and a 70-30. And it looks like the best power and torque, 70-30 is the one that you want. So that's what I'm aiming for. So with that in mind, I need to jump onto the CAD and start drawing stuff up. The first part I've designed it is the collector. Looks pretty good. So it's using a 30 degree mandrel bend goes from 35 millimeters to 38 millimeters and as you can see here when you split it apart it's the same piece that will just be welded I've got a couple of cuts to do shouldn't be too difficult to make when it comes to designing the manifold as a whole it's been quite tricky but the first thing I did was get the flanges in position and then put two collectors in where I think they're gonna go um, and I'm pretty happy with the position of everything uh, so once I've gone from there I've actually added a sec secondary collector which is 38 mil goes to uh 44 um might be a bit short but i'm gonna have a look at this further on 
and the primaries I've all designed uh, using mandrel bands, say 35 mil diameter. And I think I'm pretty happy with it. They all seem to be within a few, within it like an inch of each other. So fairly equal within length. Be quite a few bends to order, but it's all off the shelf stuff, which I'm happy about. But yeah, it's, it's taken me quite a while to get to this point. I'm God, don't know how many hours I've spent on this now. Um, but it's been, been a bit of a slog. Uh, from there, I've got the secondaries to do. Not entirely sure I'm happy with these, but they'll do for the minute till I've come up with a better idea. And then lastly, we come on to the, the bends that will join to the original exhaust. Uh, I think I'll put a, a joint in a flexible joint on this to join up to the original exhaust, but that'll come on a bit later on when I actually go ahead and make this thing. I've got a lander sensor to get in there as well. So it is quite ambitious to make a printable exhaust and every colored component you see here is actually a separate print. It's going to take me quite a while to sort this. I'm hoping I can do it in a reasonable time, but I'll show you how I'm going to locate everything. So if I just move this part here, uh, just give me a sec, there we go. You'll see on the inside it's doweled and that is the ID of the stainless pipe that I'm going to replace it with. So it, the intention here is once all this is together, not only can I locate the printed parts, but I also be able to replace the printed collectors with steel ones so I can actually start building a jig as I go. I'm hoping all this works, uh, but we'll find out. I think now is time to fire up the printer and uh, let's get cracking. So here it is, the manifold in all its glory. It's only a model. Uh, I've had to do a bit of plastic welding to get these two to stick together and here, which is done by a solder and a couple of staples, which is dead legit. I have noticed, because I've already done a bit of a fit up, um, is that this is actually quite fragile because that's cracked. Um, but generally, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks pretty cool. There is a catch, though. The catch is... I'm not using the inlet manifolds I'd planned on. So when I designed that manifold, I was still using the CBR throttle bodies and the manifold I designed. Problem is, as we found out in the last episode, I'm not entirely sure they're going to work. So I've been out and I've managed to find a second hand, where are they? Set of DCOE manifolds. So I could go Genvies instead. Uh, it's going to cost me more, but in the same, you know, in the long term, it's going to work. That's the thing. Um, so yeah, swings and roundabouts, cut your losses, but will these work with that exhaust manifold? The only way to find out is to bolt them onto stunt engine. So let's get on with it. So it's definitely the most colorful manifold I've seen. Uh, there is a slight problem though, because the man of these inlet manifolds have a slightly bigger diameter, uh, for the outside with them being cast. You can see that is practically touching there and it's the same on this side here. They're just too close. So I'm going to have to go back and rejig all this. I think I can leave the collectors where they are, but I can rejig what I've done here. Uh, I don't know what I've done with the secondaries because I just can't get the right angle of alignment. So I was just playing with it now and it seems to kick in way too close to the bell housing and I want to try and keep it a bit straighter but I've got an idea for that moving forward but so far I'm pretty happy I mean at least it showed me where everything fits what I can do when I've ordered the stainless is make the collector and the actual the intention is that the collector will actually sit here I can then build a jig off the bell housing to go across and then we can actually start building um, build the primaries. I reckon I'll start with. Um, I don't know which one I'll start so with. So I'm really happy with where I've got to. That's my idea to anyway. Changes. It's not perfect. I've had to make quite a few compromises along the way, but there's a lot of potential here. Um, and I've never done actually made a manifold before, so I've learned a lot already getting to this part. Um, and I'm really excited to see what happens. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe because it means a lot to me that. Um, and 
I'll see you soon, hopefully with a bit more actual metal work. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.